The following presentation was recorded at the NDS Public Conference in May 2022. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Philip Hubertus. I work for here in the product management area. Uh, my team is responsible for all the driver assistance and automated driving maps. Joined here by Boris, uh, senior engineering manager on our engineering publications team, uh, and Joe Su, principal engineer on the engineering team for NDS uh, products. So I'm going to find my way here. Uh, what we're going to show you is an implementation of our NDS live data. Uh, but since I'm a product manager, let me briefly touch uh, on some of the market needs we have. You know that the industry is going to look at a new architecture that is platform-based and scales across all the different features from basic assistance systems like ISA all the way into navigation, ADAS navigation, and then into automated driving. So the key thing here is that we need to get away from publishing siloed content products and databases that go into car with possible overlaps and needs, uh, needs to reference data to each other. And that's why we started um, getting engaged very early in the NDS live development and in the definition as part of the product definition group back, I think three or four years ago. Uh, at here, we started investing into NDS Live by building what we call internally a map layer stack. Um, so using our publication pipelines to really pre-compile data that then stack up nicely into the smart layers that NDS Live enables. What that means for the industry, for the tier ones and OEMs is that we start down this path, making sure that depending on your vehicle infrastructure and architecture, and the features on that vehicle, you can consume only the data you need uh, using the NDS smart layer approach. We stack this for you. So the basic uh, setting that we currently have is a map for NDS uh, in NDS Live for ISA. Uh, Joe and the team have developed uh, an ADAS basic layer as well and are working on the ADAS advanced uh, layer. But we acknowledge that ISA uh, is a pressing topic. Uh, and it's one that becomes uh, mandatory this year in the summer. And then in two years, it becomes mandatory for all newly registered cars. So you may not have time to roll out your whole platform strategy and architecture across your new models. You may need something now uh, that connects to existing uh, solutions that you have. And that is uh, what Joe is demonstrating uh, today. Something that uses NDS Live but sits on top of an existing navigation solution. And what we use for that is our own uh, here SDK, which is actually not NDS based. So I hand it over to Boris, who's going to talk a bit about uh, architecture and, and processes. And then later on, Joe will have uh, video footage and a demonstration. And later in the break, uh, you can also see it on his mobile phone in action. Thank you, Philip. Uh, okay, so I'm Boris Gumholt once again senior manager leading our uh, engineering team for NDS publication. So we develop software for compiling or preparing map data and services to deliver them. So I will follow up on this nice uh, product vision. Uh -huh. uh, and I will quickly present uh, architecture of our pipeline. First of all, the one which as we say, compile or generates uh, NDS live data based on, on the here source. So you see, we pull the data from our here source, source pass it through, through NDS live compilation. We call it internally compilation service because everything what we uh, do at here is service based. And then we generate map data, NDS live, store it in so-called catalog platform catalog, which is then consumed by the smart layer delivery service, which then talks to the cars, smartphones, and delivers the, the data. Um, for now, so what we provide uh, with, our, with our service at basically three attribute layers. So ISA, obviously, basic ADAS, there we talk about uh, curvature, slopes, and then Premium, premium ADAS, which includes lane level attributes, lane connectivity, uh, traffic lights, things like that. Yeah. 
over time we are going to add more but that's uh, what we deliver at this point uh, and then quickly on the next slide uh, high level overview or architecture of the uh, service which delivers the data it fully supports and this live uh, let's say concepts architecture that means we implement in the background a uh, number of live uh, and this live smart layer services as well as a registry service which provides the information about what kind of data is available in the service and then of course all is uh, behind api gateway so that any application which implements smart layer and the and this live smart layer can access it and make use of it so that's on a high level uh, how our system is designed and now i hand over to joe to show the most interesting part of the whole thing uh, so joe go ahead okay thank you so uh now we jump on this. So about like six weeks ago, uh, we had the idea, okay, what if, what can we present in this demo? <laughs> and we had the idea, okay, what if we can show all the contents, what we have at here together with the industrialized contents. So we started to do the brainstorming and then ended up, you know, uh, showing this app. app. So it's a basically an app, what you see on the screen, you know, it's a typical app, navigation app, what you will expect out of any map application or something like that. It shows the real time tra uh, traffic, constructions, where it's going on, search, POI, root calculations, 3D buildings, 3D landmarks. Yes, uh, whatever contents, what you can think out of here is mostly here. Based on the here SDK, we build it uh, with, in an Android platform. And on the top of that, we added the smart layer service and, and, and the, the support for the index.live contents to present on the top up here. So let me show you some, how it works, a rough overview on the video. Oh, it jumped. So let me show you the video of the introduction of it. So this is the app working. So we are starting from Germany now. Yes, it's longer than, so let's say now we are in Frankfurt, the old city, the historic area. Now you see the tra real-time traffic and around the highway, you see the constructions going on and you see the trucks related uh, restrictions. So we have the vehicle restrictions, which is basically for the transports trucks. Now we can enable it, disable it. And then you see some uh, warning signs with the restrictions there. Now I'll zoom in more then we will start to see some POIs coming up and also the 3D buildings. And also you see the 3D landmarks, the pretty one. So this is basically all integrated into the app. Yes. Now, I'll, and this is the search also integrated into the app. So let me close it. At uh, the slides, I want to open it. Oh, yeah, I have to switch it, right? Yes, here. So sorry, I have to switch uh, back, forth and back and forth again. So this was basically the app, how it works with, you know, using here SDK, showing our here contents. Now I would like to show you the, how the and this the live contents are visualized or extracted or in showing on the app. So let's say we are also in Frankfurt. Now we want to go to do some shopping. <laughs> and this is the video. Let's say I was in Berlin. I set the location. You see the small dot in the middle of Berlin. Now I'll switch it to Frankfurt. Yes, it's set to Frankfurt, now it's disappeared. Now, if I do the matching, then you see again, I'm located in Frankfurt. It does the map positioning automatically. And now you are seeing in the middle is the Tile Street, which is one of the popular street in Frankfurt for doing shopping. Yeah, so we are there. And that street, here's a picture of it. 
So you see it's a road, but it's mainly for pedestrians. It has a very limited access for the vehicles. Now for next, I will show you the next video. So from there, what I will do is on the top of that road, I'll just do a long press to highlight that road. And then it will show the attributes coming from the NDS.Live service in our house. So now it picked, it does the geocoding, it matches to a certain location. And then it's downloading on the background. You see on the top, there was a small well, notification saying what tile has been downloaded. And then on the top, you see the you know, attribute section showing what ID and attributes there. Now, let me show you a little bit more about the attributes shown here. So it shows this kind of thing and the red box, you see the restriction and you see many types of vehicles. Basically, as we saw from the photo earlier, you know, most of the vehicles are restricted. And this is how it's encoded in NDS, which is so-called prohibited passage attribute groups. Now, the next one is just next to that street, after the corner, there is another one, which I want to show with a more complicated case, is this. Okay, I clean up the, uh, on the app, I just clean up by pressing that X. Now I select by long pressing it again, and then shows the other one, which I wanted to look at, and now you see on the uh, top, the attribute section, it has a little bit more of the restriction attributes. So it shows a little bit more complicated. I mean, it, it may <laughs> be a surprise for you to read it, but it's basically what it means is not only the vehicle types, it also has the time constraints for the access restriction. So basically mail uh, related. Uh, for us in here terms, it also includes the commercial delivery vehicles like FedEx or DHL or Amazon. Those kind of delivery service uh, vehicles are restricted from 11 a.m. to 5 a.m. on the next day. So in other words, if you reverse it, that means those Vehicle types are allowed, only allowed to use that road from 5 a.m. to 11 a.m. So this is what it shows. And now I was just searching around, okay, is there any more complicated cases? And yes, there are more. <laughs> so I don't, I don't want you to read everything here, but I just wanted to show you, okay, there are even more complicated cases using NDS.Live. Uh, the attributes can be really flexibly uh, grouped with, you know, representing some restrictions or some attributes. Now, the next slide is that speed limit. As Philip and Boris mentioned, ISA is one of the hot topic in Europe. Now, speed limit. Before I show you the actual demo, I just first want you to have a look at the screen and I will tell you how to read uh, the contents of here. So on the attribute section, you will see ID, which is basically the road ID. And next to it, you see the tile ID and Interesting thing is the current position, which is basically the map position on that road and what index it is belonging to. So basically it belongs, uh, right now it's 0.5, means, okay, it's between the zero index and the first index. And then you see attributes with three, with the checkbox, means starting with the star, those are the up attributes which is actually applicable for that specific attribute because it's in that certain range. The vehicle is in that certain range. And the last one, it still has the speed limit, but it's in a different range than the current vehicle position. So it's not applicable, but still you'll find it on the road later. So you see right now it's only 50 kilometer per hour speed limit. And then next, if the car drives further and reaches the other range, then now the speed limit changes. Now it's now uh, instead of 50 kilometer per hour, now it's 80 kilometer per hour. So basically this is entering the highway. So yeah, you have, certainly have to drive faster, right? And now I'm going to show you this exact uh, route, what I used. So let me open the final video. So this is the route I used in around Wiesbaden. So I used the simulator. Now from a normal road, I'm entering the motorway. Now you see it's, try it's downloading the tiles, by the way, and then showing the um, positioned attributes. Now it 
enters the ramp, now you see another attribute coming up as a single direction, which is the prohibited passage, how it's described uh, to tell one direction link. And now you see it was 50 km per hour. Now it switched to 80 km per hour because I further drove and I have driven. And now on the highway, you see multiple groups of speed limit. There are many reasons for that. But basically, it's 100 km per hour, it was, but there are some extra constraints. Like there were some constructions until last January. So it was 80 km per hour. That's why it's shown up there. I could have added some logic. Okay, looking at the time constraints, it doesn't affect, but I just simply added the logic just to check the range. And we have multiple same 80 km per hour there because we have multiple ways of describing the attributes. This is coming from you know describing the smallest, granular, most smaller feature wise described attributes. And I just kept it in that way. It could have been you know, optimized to show less attributes, but for the demo purpose, I thought, okay, this will be okay. Now we are start still driving and driving. You see many attributes and the current position is moving. And one thing I want to make a remark is that the left bottom, you see the speed limit warning sign, right? It's 100 right now. That contents is not the NDS.Lite contents, actually it's the here other, the contents coming through other services. And top, you see the section, which is coming from NDS.Lite and you see everything is aligned. And I just missed the part, so maybe I jump backwards a bit. So now you are exiting from the motorway. Now the speed limit is 100 because you are, you, have, you are getting out. You have to reduce the speed. And soon you will see it's now 50 km per hour because you are reaching the end of the motorway, of the ramp. Now you are making a right turn. Still, we are on a one-way direction link. So we still have the, let's say, restriction for the single direction here. Now soon, we will merge into a road which has both direction links. Now up there, you see the single direction restriction has been removed. So I know this is everything you already know, but this is something what I wanted to present that in this dot like contents, for your information, this app was built uh, with my colleague in Mumbai, uh, Manish. So both of us was, were working for the last two, three weeks, and we were not the expert of uh, using here SDK. And also we were not the best one using the Android platform. And within less than three weeks, we were able to integrate everything with the here existing SDK, making this solution, which means, I guess, whatever solution you have using our here things, if you use our NDS.Live service, and we also have the here NDS.Live smart layer service client we can provide, using that, everything will be smoothly, everything aligned, and you can easily integrate into your whatever solution you have. So this is something uh, what I wanted to say. And yeah, that's all for the demo, what I prepared. And if you have any questions, you can leave it on the chat. Then we'll be answering later by email or after all the session. And yeah, thank you. Thank you for watching. Visit our website for news on NDS at nds-association.org.